flashlights can seem very oppressive for some killers. However, if you're aware of their weaknesses, they will quickly become your favorite item to face. In this video, I'll be talking about what to do when you're blinded at a pallet, how to deal with survivors that are trying to go for flashlight saves, some advanced flashlight techs that some survivors will try to go for, and the best anti-flashlight perks. And spoiler alert, it's actually not Lightborn. And as a little bonus, how to deal with survivors that click their flashlights at you to try and piss you off. So let's start with what to do when you're being blinded at a pallet. Now, if a survivor blinds you while you're in the stun animation, this is very simple. Just break the pallet and by the time the pallet's broken, your blind will be over. However, what do you do when they're blinding you in the breaking animation? Well, there's one thing you should do beforehand and that's to have your volume up while playing killer. This is good in general just to track survivors' footsteps and their breathing better. It's generally more important to have higher audio on killer than survivor. The second thing you should do is to look down after breaking the pallet. Some survivors will try to chain blind you and that's blinding you right as your blind is about to end so they keep blinding you over and over and you basically can't see for a long time. If you look down this will pretty much counter this and they won't be able to do this. And if you're able to track their footsteps just by hearing them you'll actually catch up to them quicker because they had to stand still to blind you at the pallet so this can work in your favor. Next up is how to deal with flashlight saves. If you notice that there's some flashlights in the pregame lobby you can expect these. The first thing you should look for is if a down survivor is right next to a wall then you just look at the wall. Make this a habit. I pretty much do this without thinking now because I've done it for so long but this is basically what you should do if you down a survivor next to a wall. Now let's say you don't have that luxury you down them in the open. Well the first thing you can do is just right after you down them is to walk up to them and stand still for a second and many survivors will fall for this bait thinking you're about to pick up and they'll reveal themselves. Then you'll probably be able to get a hit on them and they'll run away with their tail between their legs. Some killers are actually really good at faking pickups such as Trapper and Demogorgon and Hag because what you can basically do is pretend to put down a portal or a trap and for most survivors they'll mistake that for the picking up animation and this works really well. The other thing that you should keep in mind if a flashlight player does manage to get a save is that while it may be very frustrating because you don't know how quickly you're going to be able to get another down, keep in mind that they've probably been following you around not doing generators. So even though things might seem bad, it's actually not all that horrible when survivors follow a survivor around waiting for their flashlight save. And if you manage to negate it, if you look at a wall and they don't get it, then they've basically wasted like a minute or two minutes of their time. Also keep an eye for survivors that crawl right after you down them, seemingly try to, trying to crawl more to the open, giving another survivor a good chance to get the flashlight save. Next, let's talk about some advanced flashlight techs that some survivors would try to pull off on you. The first one is the CJ tech and it's quite simple. You have a drop pallet and on one side you have a down survivor and the killer. On the other side you have a survivor with a flashlight. When you think the killer is about to go and break the pallet, you vault the pallet. And since you can't break a pallet with a survivor vaulting it, the killer will be forced to pick up the survivor. Then you can vault back and get the flashlight save. The best thing to do is to just wait it out. Sometimes survivors will vault right into you and you'll get a free hit or even a grab if they're injured. Next up we have locker techs which are quite rare but they could still happen to you so I want you to look out for them. Basically you have a down survivor at a locker and then you have another survivor that jumps in the locker. When the killer tries to pull you out the locker you jump out causing the killer to pick up the survivor since you can't press space or whatever button it is to open a locker when a survivor is jumping out. Then they just get the flash of the save right in front of you. Again, what you could do is just be patient and hope they vault right into you. And that's pretty much all you can do. So just be patient with this and you'll be able to get them. The last main segment, I want to talk about some of the best anti-flashlight perks and why you really shouldn't be running Lightborn. The thing about Lightborn is that sure, it counters flashlights, but that's it. That's all it does. It only counters flashlights. If a survivor tries to blind you at a pallet and they find that you have Lightborn, they just won't do it again and maybe you could get a hit a little bit sooner because of it but that's all the perk value you'll get especially if they're on comms and they're able to call it out. Here's actually some much better anti-flashlight perks starting with infectious fright. What infectious fright does makes it so when you down a survivor 
every other survivor in your terror radius will scream. So basically, if you down a survivor and no one screams, you know no one is around for the flashlight save unless you have a small terror radius for whatever reason. And if someone does scream, you know to be a little bit more careful when picking up. Then you have Franklin's Demise, which makes a survivor drop an item when you hit them with a basic attack. This is a lot better than Lightborn since it doesn't just work for flashlights, it makes them drop any item that they're holding. Medkits, toolboxes, whatever. And the last one, which you might not expect to see on here, is Fire Up. Now Fire Up is not a very commonly run perk because, to be honest, it's not all that good. But a little advantage it does have is it makes you pick up survivors faster than more generators that are done, along with being able to break things faster and vault things faster and other stuff. What this will actually do is cause a lot of survivors to mess up their timing since your pickup animation is much shorter than usual, and you're actually able to counter flashlights in a weird, funny way. So that's pretty much it for the video, but I do want to leave you with one extra tip, and that is if a survivor is flashlight clicking at you or teabagging, most killers might get frustrated and be like, oh, you're gonna get it now, you little teabagging clicking thing. But do keep in mind that this might be exactly what the survivor wants. Maybe they have dead hard ready or off the record, or they have some really strong tiles to work with. So when a survivor does this, really consider if that's a good chase you want to take, because most of the time they do want to piss you off and grab your attention. So honestly, most of the time, what you should do is the exact opposite is be like, oh, I see you clicking. I'm just going to go do something else. Keep chasing the survivor I was already chasing, etc. And yeah, that's pretty much it. After this video, you know, all the all the common counters to flashlight saves and flashlight blinds. And honestly, you can deal with them a lot better and then hopefully realize that flashlights are really not that good. And in my opinion, they're actually the worst survivor item in the game. I'm usually very happy when there's a survivor with a flashlight because I know they'll just follow me around waiting for me to down someone and try to get the save. And they're just countered because I looked at a wall and they wasted their time. That pretty much wraps up the video. Hopefully you learned something new and you find dealing with flashlights a bit easier now. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, everyone.